God bless you, friends. Dr. Ray Johnson here, senior pastor here at Dominion Outreach Worship Center. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. This is your class for the new life process of preparing for baptism. So I want to thank you for tuning in on tonight. This is a new life Christ in Christ training webinar. This is for Christians and new believers. So whether you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior at the altar in one of our services or whether you responded uh, to the online platforms and you saw us while we were in quarantine and you responded that way, this medium allows us to be able to come to you right where you are on your tablet, your home, your device, wherever you're watching from, and to understand the importance and the role of baptism. And so I'm glad that you're able to listen in. This is class number three. Make sure you're on the right class. This is class number three for you to be able to take advantage of that. A few housekeeping things one more time. Our quick directory there, you can see our number. The church email address, dominion at dominionministries.tv or info at dow.church. And then, of course, our website, www.dow.church and www.dominionministries.tv. And, of course, if you want to participate in our mobile ministry, where you can get connected with us that way. Let me put that one on the screen so you're able to see it. That one is just simply text Walk of Dominion. That's right, Walk of Dominion to 71441 or even better, 40691. Text Walk of Dominion as one word to 40691. And you can download our giving app, Dom Give to 71441 to participate in that as well. Our Dominion Ministries fan page on Facebook, Walk of Dominion, our group page. I want you to join there. It gives you more insight and update on information and things that we have available. And also Twitter at Dominion Men and also Dominion Economics. Our subscription to being able to receive the word sent right to your phone. Text get the word as one word. Get the word to 71441 and to subscribe to the weekly bulletin that comes out in email, the newsletter. We want you to just go to dow.church. That's right, dow.church and click on the word subscribe. You can put your information in. It'll have you locked right in with us. Amen, my friend. Amen. Let's get started with today's lesson. Uh, I want to make sure that we're able to follow up with you. There's the information there on the screen in front of you. But today's class is on baptism. Today's class is on baptism. Baptism should give you confidence about your salvation and your relationship with Jesus Christ. And so with that understanding, you can publicly demonstrate your faith. And baptism is just simply that a public demonstration that I've made a commitment for my relationship with Jesus. The word baptize simply means to dip, to overwhelm, to plunge or to submerge. That is what the word baptism means. I normally say this a lot when I am in service and I'm literally doing baptisms at the time. I normally say I come from the old school generation. You know, I'm almost third generation preacher. And so succeeding my father in ministry, he believes in putting you all the way in the water. So do I. And we're going to bring you all the way back out leave the old man in and come up new. Amen, somebody. And so baptism means to submerge. Got to put you underneath that water. What must the believer, why must the believer be baptized? Well, we've got three reasons there on the screen with you, three reasons, because Jesus commanded that believers be baptized. That's why we're baptized. Remember, it's a public demonstration of your faith publicly that you acknowledge that you are a child of God, that you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Jesus commanded it to be so. And then number two, because Jesus was baptized to fulfill all righteousness. Remember, he also said no servant is greater than his master. And here's number again, number three, because baptism tells the world of our decision. Your baptism is like your coming out party. It's that moment where you have testified to everybody that I am a child of God, that I belong to the Lord, and that Jesus is my Savior, and he lives in my heart. It's like your coming out party. Everybody else can come out of the closet. We might as well come out of the closet as believers and testify that we belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, say amen if you can. So now, Matthew 28 and 19 says this, therefore go and make disciples of all nations. Here it is, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I know many people get caught up on uh, many of the 
the the different nuances of the faith of Christianity that you're not really baptized unless you are baptized in Jesus' name. John the Baptist was baptized in Jesus' name. Jesus said, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So at baptisms, we do all of them. We say in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and in the name of Jesus. So the important part is the decision in your heart to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and to be, make a public commitment to publicly testify that I am a believer, that I belong to the living God. Amen. And so now the baptism of Jesus, here it is. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, John says. He said, so why are you coming to me? Jesus said, but Jesus said, look, it should be done, but we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. Matthew 3, 13 through 17. I know you came to the altar. I know you may have said a quiet prayer in your bedroom, but the importance of public witness and public testimony that you belong to the Lord is through the waters of baptism. So it's important if Jesus himself could do it, how much more so should we be engaged in baptism. Look at this, 16. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, watch this, the heavens were opened and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. That's the example of the Holy Spirit. And a voice from the heaven said, this is my dearly uh, loved son who brings me great joy. Now I memorize it in the King James where it says, in whom I'm well pleased. That symbolic presence of the Holy Spirit that came upon Jesus at his baptism literally testifies that he has the favor of God and the authority of God to begin his ministry. Come on, somebody. And so many people have great zeal for God, but yet haven't walked through the proper processes before they begin to try to do things for God without his approval or without his presence. Come on, let's keep going. Romans 10 and 13 says this, why do I need to do what do I need to do to be baptized? Here's Romans 10 and 13. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. To be baptized, you've got to first be saved, calling on the name of the Lord. What takes place in water baptism? Here are three things that take place. We are identified with Jesus Christ in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Baptism is just like a death. It's a death to the old man. It's a burial, being leaving our sins, buried in the watery grave. And then there's a resurrection. We coming up out of the water brand new. We walk in new victory over life dominating sins. Baptism leads us into the ability to take victory over the things that held us captive to wayward lifestyles, ungodly behaviors, um, ungodly attitudes, ungodly thought processes. We leave those in the waters of baptism. Now, does that mean you're going to get everything right tomorrow? No. But what it does mean is that you will be here, begin to hear the Holy Spirit in your conscience reminding you that you belong to the Lord and speaking to you about forgiving and choosing and making right decisions. That's critically important. And what baptism, why, what takes place in the waters of baptism? We say to the world, we are not ashamed of Jesus. I don't know about y'all. But like I said before, baptism is a public witness, a public testimony. I belong to God. I'm his child. And I'm coming out of the closet for everybody to know. My God, I hope you're excited about that, just like I am. Look at Romans 6, 3, 5 through 11, or 5 and verse 11. Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives since we have been united with him in his death. We also be raised to life as he was. And verse 11, so you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ. Baptism literally gives you the strength and the power to overcome the nature of sin that is in our human nature. I've got a quick story I want to share with you real quickly. Consider Cain for a moment. Cain, the brother of Abel, was not necessarily in a good space after the Lord did not receive his offering. Now, the Bible says that Abel brought an excellent offering before the Lord, an excellent sacrifice. He gave all to God. 
and gave him a sacrifice before the Lord. But now Cain maybe cut some corners, maybe didn't follow through all the way, the way that God wanted to. And the Bible says that God comes to Cain and says, you will be received. You and your sacrifice will be received if you do well. That word well there means completing, completion or alignment through a, an observance of an alignment. But Cain does something. He gets jealous and envious. And God says to Cain, sin lies at your door. Hear me now. And it desires to have you. But you should rule over it. Now, we know sin got the best of Cain. Jealousy and envy got the best of him. He killed his brother. But baptism helps us to be able to overcome when sin lies at the door for us to give us the chance to be able to overcome some things. I want to encourage you with that on tonight. Uh, so as you're watching this, to let that be a blessing to you. That's what takes place in the waters of baptism. Look at Colossians 2 and 12. For when you were buried with Christ, when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. Baptism causes you to trust in the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead, who can raise you from dead works, dead thoughts, dead processes. Romans 6, 11 through 18. Now I'm going to read this all the way through. As a matter of fact, let's do it this way. Let's put this one on the screen for us so that we're able to see it. Check it out. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. Do not let sin control the way you live and do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God for you were dead, but now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master, for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. Come on, y'all. 15. Well, then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we go on sinning? Watch it. Of course not. Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? I got to help somebody right there. You become the slave of whatever it is that you choose to obey. So if you choose to obey alcohol and it overtakes you and drunkenness comes upon you, and when that happens, you get angry and get upset, and then you end up committing an atrocity against yourself, against somebody else, you become a slave to that. Every time you come under pressure, you got to have a hit of something, some nicotine, some cigarette, something, some cigar, you become a slave to that. Whatever it is that you turn to when you come under pressure, you become, some people turn to, to sex, and some people uh, turn to same sex, some people turn to, to uh, drug use, some people turn to overeating and gorging, and that's called gluttony. Uh, some people turn to music that sets them in a certain mood, that causes them to behave in a certain way. That becomes a slave to you. Whatever you choose to submit yourself to, you become a slave to whatever you choose to obey. Aren't you glad God has come to set us free? Watch this. You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Look at 17. Thank God once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become, you have become slaves to righteous living. I don't know about y'all, but there are some moments in your life where things happen, but you end up, as anybody like me, sometimes some things take place, you don't even want to forgive. You don't even want to release, but God ends up helping you anyway. God ends up touching you anyway. God ends up causing you to be kind and causing you to be hospitable and causing you to release and causing you to forgive. That's called the nature of God and causing you to to welcome his presence in where you are able now to be a blessing to others. That's God's nature at work within you. So let's go on. Why are we baptized by immersion? Why put us underneath the water? We said it already. Jesus was baptized by immersion. Why not us? New believers in the Bible were baptized by immersion. Why not us? The word baptized means to dip or die. It comes from the word baptismo, which means to submerge. 
Baptism means get all the way in that water, head, body, toes, fingers, knee, uh, nails, fingertips, ears, everything got to come under. Just like when you come up out of the water, it's a sign of you coming under the presence and power of God in your life. So let's look at uh, the Ethiopian eunuch here in Acts 8, 38 to 39. Check it out. Philip is baptizing him. He ordered the carriage to stop. They went down into the water and Philip baptized him. Can I read that to you one more time? He ordered the carriage to stop. I got to say this to somebody real quickly watching me. There are some things that you're just going to have to stop. You're going to have to stop the lying. You're going to have to stop the conniving. You're going to have to stop the manipulating. You're going to have to stop under certain pressures running to certain things. You're just going to have to stop. You got to make up in your conscious mind, I'm just going to stop. See, baptism helps you stop. As a matter of fact, you consciously make up in your mind, I'm stopping that, I'm picking up God's way, and because I've chosen that, I'm going into the waters of baptism. Come on, say amen if you can. Listen, verse 39, when they came up out of the water, this is good, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch never saw him again, but he went on his way rejoicing. There are some things God snatches out of your life through the waters of baptism. Sometimes some people will come out, they go in a mean cuss, but they come out speaking words of exhortation. They go into the water dependent, but they come out liberated and free to be able to serve and walk with God. Some things get snatched out of your life through the waters of baptism. I'm so glad you're watching this today. This is good news. I feel preaching on me, but I'm going to stop right here because this is supposed to be a teaching lesson right now. So here are points to ponder as we close out about baptism. Baptism is something God commanded each believer to experience. These things are true of baptism. Baptism is more than an external experience in the Christian faith. It's not just something you do because your grandmama, your granddaddy, your mama, your daddy. No, this is something you do to testify of your commitment to the cause of Christ and to his cause in your life. Baptism is not an option. Every person that receives Jesus as their Lord and Savior, know it's, notice it's not Savior and Lord. It's Lord first, then Savior second. It's not an option. Baptism by itself cannot wash away sins. It is a public commitment and confession of your commitment to walk with Christ. Only the blood of Jesus washes away your sin. Salvation does that for you. So when we gather together in the next lesson, we're going to talk to us about the importance of the word of God. It's going to be lesson four or five. It'll be a bit longer than this one. But I want to say to you, through this lesson on baptism, you're now prepared to enter into the waters. But I want to encourage you, go through lesson four and five, and then after this, six and seven, and follow those two lessons. And then when that's complete, you've completed all the classes. You'll be ready for baptism. We look forward to seeing you. Remember, go to our website and register for several of the other things that we've got available. Check out some of the things that are on the media there on the media page. Listen to some of that word that has been preached. It's going to help you understand more. And I'm glad you tuned in to today's lesson. Let me pray with you before you go. Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for those who are watching. Thank you for those that they invited to watch with them. Bless them now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Keep them, God, in the center of your will and in your presence. I come against the adversary, the devil, the spirit of the age, the wicked one that will try to tell them that they're not saved, that will try to tell them that, God, that you don't love them, that will try to tell them that there's nothing that has changed in their life. I bind that work against them now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, you cause them to know that your presence is with them, and that they are indeed saved. And as they prepare for the waters of baptism, there's a change that's coming in their life. In Jesus' name, God bless you, my friend. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for listening in. We'll see you again soon. And make sure you tune in to the next lesson. In Jesus' name.